So this is the giant factory off-road team and we're going to take a look at the bikes of their top pro racers. We've been invited by Giant Bikes to check out their full range of their athletes pro bikes and see what makes a cross-country bike so fast and how it differs from an enduro and downhill bike. So we're starting at the cross-country end of the garage and this is Carl Decker's race bike. This is his XTC Advanced Pro 29er and this is the bike he's actually racing here today at Sea Otter on these beautiful, smooth, super fast single tracks you can see up in the hills behind me. So Carl, like many of the other racers here, is choosing a hardtail. They're super lightweight, they're the fastest bike around this type of track. So there's not an ounce of weight on this bike that doesn't need to be there. It's a super minimalistic race bike. If you look at it, it's even set up one by, so one by 11, so there's no shifter. The bars look super clean. Loads of carbon fiber on this bike, as you'd expect. So we've got the Protharsis bar, so we've got full internal routing for that XTR Di2. So the cable from the shifter goes along inside the bar to that display and the battery is inside the bike. So loads more carbon fiber. Again, the Protharsis seat post. We've got the giant contact saddle with those massive carbon rails. Giant carbon fiber rims, 29 of course. And we've got these Maxxis Aspen super low profile tires. So there's hardly any tread on there at all. It's all about rolling as fast as possible. To be honest, it's almost like a gravel bike this. It's gonna be super lightweight and really fast. So whilst in this profile, the Giant is a proper cross-country race machine, actually, it's very versatile. So you've got these dropouts here, you can change over. So you can run this single speed if you want. You can also run 27 plus tires on this bike. So multiple different personalities. Today, it's a proper cross-country race machine. So this bike is boost front and rear, so you've got that spacing to give you those stiff, strong, big wheels. But also you can see how the frame has been designed to really shorten the chain stay. So you can see that seat tube almost bending around that rear wheel. Looks super neat, but also you get the advantage of a really nice flickable bike because you bring that chain stay nice and short. So you can also see how Carl has slid those dropouts right forward because they can move around and that does obviously make that rear end as short as possible. That must be a characteristic he likes. So this is another one of Carl Decker's bikes. This is the Anthem Advanced Pro 29er, his full suspension bike. So one of the great things about being a pro bike racer is having all the tools at your disposal to do the right job at the right time. So like all cross country racers, Carl has got the choice of a hardtail or a full suspension bike where he needs it. So this is the Anthem that was actually updated at the end of last year. So a few new features to this bike. It's got 90 mil travel on the rear, 100 up front. You've also got that trunnion mount on top of the shock. So that means the bearings are actually sat inside the frame rather than having a bush in the top of the shock, which is more durable and it's actually smoother rotation on there. So it makes that bike a little bit more sensitive on the rear. So there's a few new sponsorship changes for the Giant Factory off-road team this year and actually most noticeably is the DVO suspension. So you've got those green colours that DVO are known for. So we've got the DVO Topaz T3 air shock on the rear, all the adjustability you'd expect from a modern shock. We've got the lockout lever there, rebound control, full stealth back other than those green anodized bits, 90mm travel on the rear, 100mm up front, again that's an air fork, a sapphire, custom blue with those green bits really matches the bike. So loads of adjustability on this DVO Sapphire fork. You've got the high and low speed compression up top here, rebound control on the bottom of that right hand leg, but bottom of the left hand leg is sensitivity off the top. So loads of control for a cross country fork. So as well as the rear suspension, we've also got geometry changes on this compared to the hardtail. So it's one degree slacker, but also the wheelbase is almost 50 mil longer. Chainstay is also longer, so it makes it a much more stable bike. These full suspension bikes are likely to be ridden rowdier on more technical tracks where you're going to use the suspension, but also the geometry is going to help you out and make this a fast bike. So as you see with many of the pro racers that have multiple bikes, there are a lot of similarities in setup. So same bar width, stem length, saddle height, so the riders can swap between the two bikes and not have to get used to it again. So of course the main disadvantage with the full suspension bike is that extra weight, but we're still seeing loads of carbon fibre over this bike carbon composite front end, full rear end, linkage, and we're seeing titanium hardware on this bike to try and keep this bike as light as possible. Also some custom touches that we often see with racing experience. So we've got a bit of protection on that DI2 cable at the rear of the bike where it's most vulnerable. Also the cables are just wrapped together, super neat. It's even normally a rubber seal that comes on that seat tube clamp, but it's not on there. So anything that's not needed is not on this bike. 
Again, a Shimano 1x11 Di2 drivetrain on here. XTR, of course, the top of the range. We've got the small HD clippers pedals, again, to keep the weight down. We've got a bit more meat on the rubber of these tires. We've got these Maxxis Icons, 29, 2.35 wide. What are we talking? So moving up the travel, and this is Adam Craig's giant trance. So Adam is a legendary cross-country racer turned enduro rider. So this is probably a bike you'd expect him to ride. It's a 140 mil travel bike with a 154. And something I've never noticed before is Giant only seems to employ giant riders. Can you name me a short giant rider? Can't think of one. So we're moving up the travel and the bike is getting more able to deal with those rougher, faster courses. So we've actually got a smaller wheel, so 27.5 on this bike. I drop a seat post for the first time in the range, but also the geometry is changing to deal with those faster courses. So two degrees slacker on this bike, it's 67. The overall wheelbase is longer, although the chain stays shorter to make it a maneuverable but stable bike. So the bike shares that Maestro floating pivot with the Anthem, but everything's starting to get a little bit beefier on this bike, so more carbon in the frame. We've got a bigger shock on the back, so the DVO Topaz 2 now. So you've got a larger piggy back there to deal with that extra build up of heat. We've also got the diamond fork up front with this larger diameter, lowers and stanchions. Again, just to deal with those extra forces of the faster, rougher terrain. So 27.5 wheels on this bike, and actually these look like prototype rims to me. There's absolutely no markings on them. They're alloy, I don't recognize them, but there are some sort of chalk markings on the back with different numbers, which makes you think that Adam's probably been testing different wheels out. Again, things are getting a bit chunkier on the tires, so we've got an aggressor 2.35 wide tire on the rear. Still fairly low profile, fast rolling tire, but up front we've got a proper downhill style tire. We've got the Maxxis Minion in a 2.5. So an aluminium asymmetric rear end on this bike, carbon up front and a carbon Maestro link. We've also got the addition of an MRP chain guide on this bike, so to help with that rougher terrain to keep that chain on. Again, 1x11 Shimano XTR, but actually a mechanical version this time, no DI2 on Adam's bike. Interesting to see he's got some flat paddles up there, I wouldn't expect that. Still air suspension on this bike, but we're definitely starting to see difference in controls. So we've got that dropper seat post to get that seat out of the way for the rougher terrain. Also a much shorter stem, so 50mm Koryak stem on this, and also the wider Prothasis bar on here. Something I really like about this bike are these ODI foam grips. So, you could accuse Adam of having very soft hands, but actually, like most pro riders, they ride their bike all the time, so they want something to be super comfortable, and I really like the feel of these. So we're moving up the travel again. This is the Giant Rain, and this is an enduro race machine. In fact, this is raced at EWS by the Aussie rider, Josh Carlson. And it's refreshing to see Josh is the first rider to have his brakes the right way around, the front brake on the right-hand side. So the Rain is a 160mm travel bike, front and rear. It's also the first bike we've seen with a coil shock, so many of the riders actually prefer the small bump sensitivity that a coil shock gives you over an air shock. But we've still got an air fork up front with a DVO diamond. So we're back on Shimano Di2 XCR with Josh's bike. Again, 1x11 of course. We've got much more protection now, so on that chainstay, stop any slap and any noise, but also on that Di2 cable. We're up to downhill tyres, front and rear. We've got the Maxxis Minion and the double down casing, 2.5 front and rear. So we've got bigger pedals on this bike. We've got the HTT1s with the cage around the outside, but also the pins up front, which gives that ability to find that pedal a little bit easier and a bit more support in those sketchy situations. Also got bigger brakes. We've got Shimano Saints on here, so big four piston calipers and a lot of stopping power. So the bars are wide, they're also super high. You can see all these spaces underneath there, so good for riding those downhill trails. That's a pro Koryak stem. That looks about 40 mil for me, so it's getting even shorter. I've also got the first aluminium bar on any of these bikes. So that's a pro Koryak. Nice and wide. Interesting setup. He actually likes to run his levers really high on the bars. I've seen that before on a pro bike check I've done with Josh. So obviously he likes to ride quite far back off the bike and likes them super high. Also got these Bark Buster hand guards. So in those enduro races, the riders don't always know the track super well often going super close to the bushes, so it's just gonna save their hands a little bit when you're smashing through the trees. So the head angle is getting slacker again. The rain has a 65 degree head angle. Wheelbase is getting longer again. The chain stays is exactly the same, four, three, five millimeters. So the bikes are getting tougher. We're seeing coil shocks. We're seeing accessories to deal with that tougher terrain. So the weight is going up.
Now to the biggest bike of all, this is Elliot Jackson's Glory Downhill Bike. It's got 203 millimeters travel on the rear, 200 up front. So we've gone up on the suspension units now again. We've got a triple clamp fork up front and a bigger coil shock on the rear. So this is the DVO Jade. You can see the eye to eye on that is much bigger, a big piggyback, again, to do all that extra heat that's coming. 200 mil suspension up front. This is an air fork still, but of course that triple clamp makes it much stiffer to deal with the extra punishment this bike is gonna take. So loads of adjustability on this fork. Of course, you can mess around with the air pressure in there. You've got high and low speed compression on the top, rebound on the bottom, that off the top sensitivity. You've also got these air release buttons at the back. So after a really rough run, the suspension works so hard that actually a bit of air will get past these seals and that can make the fork a little bit stiffer. So at the end of a run, pop those, it'll get them back super sensitive. Again, in that lovely blue giant color, but check out how dark black those stanchions are. So you've got the full Shimano Saint downhill group set on here. Got those alloy cranks, they're actually shorter now as well. So 165 mil cranks. Because the bike has so much travel, you can get super close to the ground. So the shorter crank just gives you that bit more clearance. Also got the full chain guide now, so top and bottom chain guide. And a super small cassette on here, so it's 10 speed, but look how close the ratios are. You really don't need a big wide range cassette on a downhill bike. Shimano Saint brakes with those big rotors, so 200 mil gives that extra leverage, but also gives you that heat dissipation because it will build up a lot on a downhill run. The head angle is two degrees slacker again, so we're down to a 63 now. Wheelbase 1219, so getting a little bit longer, and another five mil on the chain stays. A Prothas is 9.8 alloy bar up there, as well as that direct mount stem, so that goes directly onto that top crown of that DVO fork. Up on the longest travel bike, there isn't as much carbon fibre, but we've still got a carbon front end plus linkage, just now all the components tend to be aluminium. So there you go, it's pretty good being a pro racer, you get to ride the best bikes, but also you can get out there and actually pretty much buy an identical bike like this. So if you want to see when I rode the Giant Anthem, click up there for that one. Give us a thumbs up if you like new factory looking bikes and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.